Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second video in our Systems of Linear Equations series. Today, we're going to look at solving linear system uh, through the graphing method. A linear system can be solved by graphing the linear relations and then determining the point of intersection. You may use any method you wish to graph the linear relations. So what that would look like visually is if I give myself a coordinate plane here quickly, and I graph my two lines, the solution will occur at the point of intersection. So right here, this will be my solution to my linear system. Let's look at doing this. Um, now, you can graph a couple different ways. We could graph with the um, slope and a point method, which I'm going to use, or you can graph with the intercept method. Um, I'm going to use the slope point method because I find it to be quicker, and I kind of like the numbers generated by it a little bit more. Um, intercept method, though, is absolutely fine. Like I said, though, I'm going to stick with the slope point method. So I'm going to number my equations and again i do that just for organization just so it uh it hopefully is clear to you at home uh which equation i'm working with i'll also have this little dotted line again that is just me breaking up my work it doesn't mean anything mathematically i'll take my first equation 2x plus 3y equals 3 and i want to put it into y equals mx plus b form so i'll move this term through now I have 3y equals negative 2x plus 3. And I'll isolate that row by dividing out whatever was in front. y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 1. So I've rearranged that equation in the slope point or slope intercept form. And now I know my slope and my intercept. My slope is negative 2 over 3. My intercept is 1, and I can graph that. Now, I should warn you, when I'm graphing on my laptop here, I'm not always as accurate as I can be if I'm just working with a piece of paper, but hopefully it turns out pretty good. Okay, so b equals 1, so that's my y-intercept is 1. It's right there. Um, now, my slope is negative 2 over 3, so that negative needs to go with one of the numbers. I always put it with the top number, so I'm going to interpret my slope as negative 2 over 3. You can, if you wish, um, interpret it as 2 over negative 3. Um, all that's going to do is tell you what direction to go when you're working with the rise or the run, so it's not really a big deal. Um, if you don't care what to do or which way you use it, go negative 2 over 3. That kind of works with what we've been doing in the previous lessons. So now it's telling me to go down 2 from there and over positive 3. So that is my second point. Once I have two points, I can draw my line. And again, let's see how well I draw this line. I think that looks pretty good. So there's my first line. Let's look at the other linear equation. So x minus y equals 4. Again, I want to put it in y equals mx plus b. And I'm just staying quiet here because I think you guys know the process. We've worked on it in other videos. Uh, that's going to be a positive. This is a negative. So here's my rearranged equation. My slope is a positive 1, which I want rise of a run. So, or I want to interpret as rise of a run. So um, that's 1 over 1. And then my y-intercept is negative 4. Let's check this out. Y-intercept negative 4 right there. It's saying go up 1 over 1. So here's my other one. Let's check out this line I'm going to try to draw. I think that looks pretty good. And you can see here, I'll use a different color. Right here, I have my point of intersection. So whenever we're graphing, we're looking for this point of intersection. So we're looking for a point that satisfies both equations. That means a point that lies on both lines at the same point or at the same time. That has to be the point of intersection. So then my solution, I'll put SS for solution set. I'm going to show you something here. This is a solution set. I said that funny. This is a solution set. Um, this is where I'm going to, this is kind of like highlighting your answer. Um, anyway, I'll put the coordinates of that point. The coordinates of that point I can see are 3 and negative 1. So I'll just put that in here, 3 and negative 1. All right, so that is how you would solve a system through graphing. Let's do another one. 
So same deal. I'm going to use slope intercept form. Subtract x, subtract x, trying to get the y by itself. You could use the intercept method. Nothing wrong with it. I just prefer this method. Y equals x minus 3. Slope will be equal to 1. Remember the slope is whatever is sitting in front of that x. And then my y intercept is negative 3. Let's do the second one right now as well. So I guess I could highlight color code that a bit better too. 4x plus 5y equals 30. Subtract 4x. Subtract 4x. 5y equals negative 4x plus 30. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. y equals negative 4 over 5x plus 6. Slope equals negative 4 over 5. Y-intercept equals 6. All right, so let's start graphing these. I'll do the first one. Uh, my Y-intercept, negative 3. Um, again, I, my slope was 1, but I want to interpret it as 1 over 1 because I want it rise over 1. So up 1, over 1. There we go. Let's draw this line. Kind of feels weird drawing it on a tablet. And I can see that it's kind of a messy line. I, if you look close, I kind of miss my dots a little bit. And this uh, that's actually kind of nice I did that because we can uh, leads me to a point. Graphing by hand, you have to be really, really precise if you want to get um, if you want to get as good answers as you can. Um, when you're graphing through technology, the graphing method is awesome. But when you're graphing by hand, it's kind of a limited technique. Sometimes there's just numbers that are tough to work with with the graph paper you have and there's kind of some restrictions or limitations on what you could do. So um, the graphing method is a great method, especially for learning and understanding what you're truly doing. But if you have to work by hand, some of the algebraic methods I'm going to show you in the future are likely a bit better. Second line, my y-intercept is 6. My slope, again, I'm going to interpret this as negative 4 over 5. So I'm going to go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 right there and you can see that's my kind of my point of intersection my point of intersection already um, my red line kind of misses that but that's because my line was likely messy and you can go ahead and kind of make the assumption that if you're that close um, that must be the answer you likely have a little bit of human error so I definitely had some human error there my my red line wasn't perfect so that's my solution that is the line or the point that sits on both lines at the same point same point using that word and my um my coordinates will be five and two if i read that properly five and two okay and then i want you to use that solution set so again the solution set is almost like circling your answer but it's the math way of doing it just to highlight this is the answer there's a whole bunch of work all around but this is the answer first thing i want to do is actually to rewrite our equations uh, by the way, I realize that this video is having some uh, sound issues. It seems my microphone is breaking down on me, so I'll have to get a replacement. Um, but I have to get these videos up for you guys. So uh, let's continue on. So d equals 6 minus 4t. And then the second equation was d equals 2.0t. Um, what I want to do is, again, I'm going to put these in the slope-intercept form, uh, then I can graph them a little bit easier. So I will look at equation 1. Trying to, lock, to talk a little bit less, so hopefully you don't miss as much then. Um, really, this equation is already in slope-intercept form. It just needs to be rearranged, so I just need to put the 4t ahead. And then now that's in slope intercept form. Um, so my slope would be negative 4. My y intercept is 6. And if you're kind of lost as to why that's slope intercept form, here's y equals 
m plus b. Just a quick recap. Okay, let's look at the second line. By the way, I guess we could write this is a I'm working on right now. So the second line, d equals 2t. My slope is 2. My y-intercept, well, I don't see it. So what could I add to this that wouldn't change the value? I could add a 0. So my y-intercept is 0. Okay, let's begin to graph now. So my y-intercept negative or is positive 6. My slope is negative 4, but I could really read that as negative 4 over 1. So down 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Okay, I can see that's off a little bit. I'll try to draw there. That's a little bit better. Okay. Um, let's look at the second line now. My y-intercept is 0, and my slope is not just 2, but it's 2 over 1, so up 2 over 1, and you can see that's already my point of intersection. I'll just draw my line to finish the job. Now, one thing we should talk about is this is a real-world problem, and um, we're talking about D, which was uh, a distance from Tyrell's cabin make that green so it stands out a bit more and t which was the time in hours so when we're talking about time in hours there will be no negative hours so none of these negative x's are going to actually apply and we're talking about um distance to tyrell's cabin well there's not going to be a negative distance you just really maybe talk about distance in a different direction or something like that but in this case um there won't be a negative distance so it's really just a one quadrant answer so my lines in math theory, keep going, but in the practice of it, uh, we'd only count answers in this first quadrant. Okay, so back to this. I can see that's my point of intersection. That's my answer. That is 1 and 2. So my would be 1, 2. Now, again, let's. Uh, this is D. B in this question asks us to really interpret, like, you know, how long did it take them to meet, and then how far were they from Tyrell's cabin? So it would take one hour for them to meet. And they were two kilometers from Tyrell's cabin. Okay. All right, and the last uh, part of the video, what I want to look at is kind of putting everything together. So we, if we're presented the linear equations, we know how to solve it through graphing. Uh, we then looked at, or just kind of realized that these linear equations, the numbers come from somewhere. So that was that word problem. Uh, now we'll look at having a situation, having to create the system ourselves and then solving it graphically. So if we read here, if the linear system is not given, then you must create it. Once you've created the linear system, you can then solve it. Remember that sometimes it doesn't make sense to connect the points of a real life linear relation. There's no such thing as 2.4 texts or 2.4 people, for example. Write a linear system to model this situation. Wayne received and sent 60 text messages on his cell phone in one weekend. He sent 10 more messages than he received. How many text messages did Wayne send and how many did he receive? Okay, so if you don't have a linear system presented to you, you need to create it. In order to create it, we need to actually um, uh, introduce some variables and then look for clues from this problem. So the variables. This, what we're doing here is we're defining the unknown quantities. And what we don't know here is how many text messages did Wayne send and how many did he receive? So really, send and receive is what we're wondering about okay so that is what our variables uh, will be we can make them x or y r s whatever you want to do i'm kind of boring so I, I like to stick with just x and y 
So x can be send, which is, that would be the number of texts that uh, Wayne sent. And y, I'll write it more properly, number of texts received. Part two now would be to actually come up with this equation. Let's go back to blue. So coming up with our system. So step one, define your unknowns. Bring variables in. Step two will be system. Step three will be solve. Step four could be check or sentence, whatever you kind of feel like. System now. Um, you got to look for some clues. So it says Wayne received and sent 60 text messages on his cell phone in one weekend. Well, that's actually a piece of information for us. Um, we know that he had six, 60 text messages, and his text messages will either be sent or received messages. There's no other type of message. Either you're sending one or you're receiving one. So our first system or our first equation could be X plus Y, the number of sent messages plus the number of received messages will equal 60. So they can be that easy or that basic, just X plus Y equals 60. Um, next, it says he sent 10 more messages, messages than he received. So what I like to do is kind of read backwards. I know that it's that maybe sounds funny, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, right here in green, received, that is Y, okay? Now we know if I read backwards from here that he has 10 more messages than he received. So received was Y and 10 more messages than that, okay? 10 more messages than he received. So Y, the number of um, texts he received plus 10. And he, it says that if I continue to read backwards, he sent 10 more messages than he received, meaning that quantity would be equal to what he sent. So Y plus 10 could be equal to X. Now this statement could be written different ways. You could write, um, x plus y equals uh, negative 10, different ways of kind of working this out, depending on how you like to kind of think through things, how you process things. But I'll leave it like that, y plus 10 equals x. So there is my system. Make that little bracket to kind of group it up. Okay, so step three will be actually uh, graphing it to solve. So I need a piece of graph paper. There we go. Um, so we already brought in our variables. Um, let me write down our system again, which was X plus Y equals 60. And then uh, Y plus 10 equals X. And uh, now it's gonna just get into the solving. So step three would be solve, and we're gonna solve through graphing. So I'll call this one uh, equation one. This will be equation two, because I want to actually rearrange them into y equals mx plus b. So I have a lot of numbering going on, I'm sorry. x plus y equals 60, subtract x, subtract x. y equals negative x plus 60. So then my slope is negative one or negative one over one. And my y-intercept is 60. Now, if I go to graph this, uh, something might jump out right away. Well, your y-intercept is 60. I do not have 60 squares or units um, on this piece of graph paper or coordinate plane. So that means I got to go up by more than ones. Um, so to go up by, to get up to 60, I'll likely have to go up by tens. And let me just kind of write that in here. This would be 20 then, 40, 60. That's exactly what I'll have to do. Um, so uh, you don't have to write um, something at each tick mark. You can see that I wrote something at every second tick mark. Why? Just so I don't um, cramp the graph. I don't really want my graph numbers to get in the way of my graphing and so I don't want to maybe make it more difficult to read my answer because I've written so many numbers on the graph. Okay, so let's just graph this first equation. So my y-intercept is 60, so that goes up here. Uh, my, y, my slope is negative 1 over 1. So go down one and over one, but how do you go down one when you're going up by 10, when my scale is 10? Well, you can't really. So let's go back to our slope and you want to adjust your slope so it makes sense for your scale. So um, it's going up and down by 10. 
which means I could rewrite this slope as negative 10 over 10. That has the same meaning as negative 1, just looks different, but it fits the scale of my graph. So I'd go down 10 over 10. There's my second point. Now I can graph it. Okay, that's uh, the first line, obviously, graph. The second one, y plus 10 equals x. So I just got to move this 10 over, and then I'll be in the perfect form. So my slope equals 1, but now from before, I know I should make it 1 over 1 or 10 over 10 because of the scale I'm going up by. My y-intercept is negative 10. Okay, so y-intercept, negative 10. Now, this is another real-world question. So, um, can you have a negative amount of text sent? No, you can't. Can you have a negative amount of text received? No, you can't. So, actually, these regions will not count as answers. That doesn't mean the lines won't travel there. I just have to know that that doesn't make sense in real life. In math theory, though, it makes sense. Um, now, my scale, up 10 over 10. Sorry, my slope, up 10 over 10. So I have my two points. I'm just getting my ruler in place. Now you can see um, my point, my point of intersection does not line up on the corner of a grid, meaning it's not like a whole number. I also know that my red line is a little bit off. So I'm just going to adjust my red line. I'm not supposed to have a nice answer in this question anyway, but I, it's supposed to, my, my line is off a little bit too, so I can make it a little bit better. Uh, sorry guys, takes a second here. That's a little bit better, so don't pay attention to this guy. No, why don't you just erase it, Mr. Troy? Because this program doesn't let me erase it. I'll blank out everything. Okay, so we want to pay attention to that line there, meaning this is my, my point. And this is where, um, with, when you're graphing by hand, it's a limited technique. I can't actually maybe solve everything accurately. Sometimes I can only estimate. So I'll have to estimate. So I'll look at this. This is kind of halfway. So that's what, 10, 20, 30, 35, I'll say. This one here. And that one looks to kind of like uh, 25. And you might say, well, I think it's maybe 26 or 27. It's an estimate. So um, that'll, that'll be fine if you do that as well. So I'm going to say 35 and 25. Um, and it says how many text messages did when did Wayne send and how many did he receive? What we're saying, 35 and 25, and we'll have to remember here, um, <clears throat> X was sent, so this would be sent and this would be received. Um, if you're not sure if that's your answer, so here's my solution set. You can always remember, you can always check these. Now, whether you show, choose to show it on your paper or just check it in your head, uh, it's kind of up to you. But like x plus y equals 60. If I add those up, 35 and 25, that equals 60. So I know that point actually works with that first line. Does the point work with the other line? Well, it says y plus 10 should be equal to x. So 25 plus 10 should equal whatever x is, and that's 35. So this actually checks out as well. Um, so it does check out. So I can write um, Wayne sent 35 texts and received 25. All right, so that's everything you need to know about graphing systems of linear equations. Hopefully that made sense. Um, if it didn't, go talk to your teacher or come talk to me. Have a great night, everybody.